Tonight's guest is Mike Edwards. Mike, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Vic. Well, you're welcome, sir. Thank you for your time. Mike, please give us a brief bio on yourself. 61 years old, retired Air Force. Two sons, married, live in South Louisiana and Crowley, Louisiana. Worked here for years and years and enjoyed the bayou and studied the bayou until this happened. So I'm still here. (laughs) Well, I can understand why an experience like the one you had would change your mind about wanting to go out and study the bayou. I totally get it. And by the way, thank you so much for your service to our country. I really appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome, Vic. It's all worth it. You're a good man. One thing in your past that you didn't mention is the fact that you were a dog catcher for years. What would you say was the meanest dog you ever had to catch or deal with? A 150-pound pit bull who was chained to a trailer at a man's car lot. His name was Duke, and he got tired of Duke, and I had to come and get him. Found out he weighed more than 150 pounds. He must have weighed 175. Easy, big woofer. And I had to get him off his chain, put him in the dead gum truck without him biting my hiney up. As soon as I closed the cage, he went ballistic. So I was lucky. I've been bit by female pit bulls protecting their puppies. I got, I'll tell you what, if you saw my arms, you'd believe I got scars. It it looked like, I tell people it's welding burns, but they're they're dog (laughs) bites. And Yeah. So it's pretty hard when being a dog catcher. I mean, look here, you're going to get bit, you're going to get scratched, something. So face it. Yeah, I'd say it has to be inevitable. Don't know how you do it, especially going up against a dog like that. That is tough. From what I understand, there's a ranch in your area that's had dogmen related problems. What can you tell us about that? That is the old Ziegler plant nursery. Crowley, Louisiana, if y'all look on your maps and find Crowley, Louisiana, there's a railroad track that goes right in between the town. I live on the south, the north side's over there. If you go west on that railroad track, straight down those rails, the Ziegler Nursery Ranch is right there next to the rails. It's about a couple of miles out of town. It's almost, if you jump, I had my actual encounter on a train bridge adjacent to that, but out in the bayou. And this, uh, the Ziegler plant nursery, the Ziegler's, she told me she wrote her story in Ghost Along the Bayou. So you can look for that. But this, uh, plant nursery, two dog men jumped down out of a tree when the the Ziegler's were coming back from eating supper in Lafayette. They went to a seafood. They came back and they jumped down out of a tree and that scared the crud out of them. Then a couple of days later, these dog men jumped over the fence. And we're talking a big fence. I've seen the fence. And the children were so terrified. They're on top of the car screaming. And they came on the property, two dog men. One of them pooped on the porch. And the wildlife people eventually, they had a gun because they carry guns, you know. And they scared them off. But the wildlife people say we've never seen the excrement, the footprints, or the hair that it left. So... That's factual, yeah. The Ziegler's, yep, for sure. She said it's an ancient Indian burial ground, and she thinks there might be a connection because her house was haunted. She said she, her chairs move and dishes fall out, and the, they have rosary crosses on the wall, and they were spinning it on occasion. But she said a priest would not come back to the house. He tried to exercise the house, and he didn't come back. So that's all a ghost along the bayou. Yep, I've been there. Now it's got a veterinarian that I know, Dr. Artal, who lives there. And I told him the story. I told him, you hit. he said, I don't mind the haunting. You know, he's a doctor. They don't bug me none, but the dog man, now what you talking about? He didn't like that none. Can't say I blame him. It's bad enough that they're going to hang around and frighten that couple the way they did, but to poop on the porch, yeah, that takes it too far. That's too far. No seen the tracks or the poop and we don't have it in our charts this is in 2009 i think they're pretty hit by now i mean most of them i've talked to 
So that's not a common occurrence. So these things stay well hid in the bayous. They got a bayou bridge right there. And her husband died. I called her. She said, yep, it's all true. I said, there must be something on this property they want or need, but I got a gun in every room, so you can call me before you come over. <laughs> so I, I called her, you know, and it's a pretty big rent. Then I ran into a taker of the land who mowed the grass and all that in a barber shop, and he said, yeah, the house is haunted. I went to get a drink, and everything started moving. I just threw my water and ran off. So there you go. Haunted houses and dog men. That's a good match in old South Louisiana. You know the lore here, witchcraft, magic, voodoo. God knows what else. Yeah, you've got your pick of spooky things going on down there. No doubt about that. Your encounter happened while you were hunting. Please tell us more about your outdoorsman credentials. Well, sure, Vic. I lived in Louisiana for 25 years from Texas, and I had to go to the library and did all my research, and I had to learn all the maps. I went to school on the maps in Louisiana. So there's fishing and hunting and hiking and biking and getting lost and old relics. There's so many old mansions here, metal detecting. You see where I'm leading because there's some places you can go and you'll find, I found Civil War bullets, uh, you know, fishing and hunting and woodsmanship and cooking outdoors. And it's just right up your alley. This place is nothing but Cajun lifestyle, French Acadians, and they know how to live. In the bayou, I guarantee it's really fun. I'm 61, so I've been doing it since I was seven. But I've only lived in Louisiana 25 years, but you can't not have something to do here. Yeah, you've been doing it a long time. Pretty long time. I, I know I can stand quietly in a bayou setting and listen to, you know, the birds will tell you something, the squirrels, even the skeeters. And so, it takes time if you can stand it. Look here, I'll tell you what, a Louisiana bayou at night when the sun's going down and it's orange, that's when all the snakes come out and every critter and God knows what else. So you have to be a man to be out in the bayou like that at night. It's something I wouldn't wish on people because you got to get out. <laughs> see, you know, see what I mean? You might become bait for something else. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. No. No, not at all. You weren't alone when that encounter happened. You actually had a good friend with you. Please tell us about him. Hunter Bone, my German shepherd. I bought him for 20 bucks at the pet store here in Crowley, Louisiana. He was out of two of them, and he was a male dog, so I picked him, and I fed him and nursed him. I overfed this dog, German shepherd. He's a killing machine in the bayou. He attacked a freight train one time. I said, Hunter Bone, you don't need to do that. It's just... He was a love puppy, and I programmed him. I just let him go. He knows what to do. He'd swim in the bayou. What freaked me out is he'd jump in the water with the snakes. I said, Hunter, you are a crazy son of a gun, boy. I think you earned your Indian feathers pretty dang good. He he was four years old when uh, he actually got put down by the dog catcher, which made me very angry. He bit the mailman <laughs> one time, and he bit through three fences in my backyard to get out. That's impossible, but he did. With his teeth, it took him a while. We're talking fence, fence. So his teeth were all bloody, but yeah, he got put down by the dog catcher and after that. so. But he was my good buddy. And he's buried in my backyard. I got him a steel cross, hunter bone. Yep. He never wanted to lose a fight. He never would turn down a fight. That's what I could understand. But in survival mode, I just let him go, and he, he's watching out for his mama. <laughs> so, wow, sure sounds like he was a heck of a dog, and of course, I'm so sorry to hear that you lost him like that. That's horrible. If you've had a dog man encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest on one of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to mybigfootsighting.com. And let me know. All right, Mike, please tell us about your encounter now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. Okay, Vic. I worked at the Levac Shipyard, seven miles west of Crowley. And it was Sunday, May 17th, 2009 at 5.30 in the morning. I left the house. The sun was not up yet. We went three miles out of Crowley to this old 
deserted place I saw was railroad bridge. It was a deserted abandoned bridge and got water around it and some land you can walk on. I said, come on, Hunter. It was early in the morning. It was foggy. It was overcast. The sun didn't come up till like nine or 10, you know, and we were in the fog and we're traipsing down the rails. We're tootling along. We get to this train bridge and it's foggy now. And we start, I said, Hunter, we're going to have to watch our step on this bridge. It's a pretty long bridge. I mean, it goes away, way over the bayou. And we had to make sure we didn't step through the slats. I had a 12-gauge Remington. I took the spring out of it, a little stick, and I could load six rounds, buckshot, buckshot, birdshot, birdshot, buckshot, birdshot, birdshot, just in case I had some more shells in my jacket. We were going over the train bridge real slow, and Hunter stopped. I said, what is it? Raccoon? Huh? Down here, I said, What it is, huh? What is it? Where it's at? That's what the Cajuns say, where it's at. I said, Where it's at? He looked at me, I said, Okay, what's that? You know, and he crept a little more. He's on the side of this bridge. I'm walking on the rails and the slats. He stops again and he's looking. And he moved. I said, What? I don't see nothing. Then it's just like a like a flash of time, you know. You're you're totally unaware of this thing is demonic looking dog creature comes walking over the rails upright out of the fog standing up on his back haunches with the growly teeth i could see the orange eyes it looked like led lights or something in the ears and i, and I, I, I said lord jesus what is that it's, this is right in front of us about 20 feet because that's how thick the fog was that day we had fog for like a seven days and i said Lord God, what is that? And I just totally, the fear factor came over me. It's like a weapon this dog uses. I think they related it to me because my arms got froze, fear, everything. My jaw gave, Hunter Bone was just so stunned. He was going to attack this thing. I said, no, Hunter, stay. Like that. And I said, well, I heard a little voice, y'all. Every hunter has one. Shoot it. <laughs> you know, Shoot it now. And I, I pulled my shot up. Out of fear, I let go of some buckshot, but it went over his head. I know that. I, to this day, I don't know why I didn't plug him right in the head with everything I had. But situation being like it is, he screamed and yelped and and he turned and ran. And I, I know I shot another round of buckshot his direction going over the bridge. I might have put hit him in the back, in the hind ear, in the ear or something. But I know he, I could hear him crashing off into the weed thickets over here. And I said, forget this. We had to go back across one third of the bridge. We finally got to the ground part. That's when I stopped and turned and shot all my shot that direction. I said, well, there's more of them, Hunter. And he's looking like he don't want nothing more to do with it because he didn't like me shooting a gun. Not all animals are gun shy, but he just had enough of that. We ran back to that truck. We took off and went back to Crowley, three miles away. Yep. Big, ugly looking. We're talking, I'm six foot. This thing's at least eight foot because he's over me. I could tell from 20 feet he's about eight foot. He must have weighed 400 pounds. Big looking Arnold Schwarzenegger looking dude with claws and funky looking legs. But I actually did think it was the devil. <laughs> I had to convince myself that it wasn't. It wasn't until I contacted the animal and wildlife people. They said, now, Mr. Edwards, are you sure it wasn't a bear? I said, no, sir, it wasn't a bear. Now, listen to me. I'm telling you what I saw. He said, okay, tell me. And I told him everything. He said, well, if that's the case, sir, your 12-gauge ain't going to stop that. It would kill you. So you're lucky. And he, I had to tell him the zone it was in, the location on the map, GPS coordinates, everything. And he said, well, we have a special phone number, Mr. Edwards, that we call the Federal SWAT initiative or something. I forget it has a, the initials. I got it wrote down on paper, but they call them and they come out and deal with those. They terminate them. Bigfoot and dogman werewolves, cryptids, they will find. You know, you got like eight men in each vehicle. So he says, You just be lucky and you don't go back no more, okay? I said, Okay. He said, Have a good click. So they didn't deny that there's such thing, big. They have such things. But what he told me was that they reproduce. 
just like any other animal. They have babies. They live in the bayou. They got to be near water. He says he's had a few calls before, and I'm sure they're wiser now. You know, that was 2009. That's what 11 years ago. But that's the first time I touched. I had some old liquor bottle of old granddad I've had in there for 40 years, and I took a shot of that. I don't even touch alcohol, and I had a shot that day to calm my honey down, dude. It's like you're living in a uh oh Disneyland, <laughs> you know. Surprise! I mean, I know it's a critter by now. I've come to realize that's for real, and I've talked to so many people and listened to your shows as well as others, and even government agents and all the rest of, it, and looked at every dang story. I mean, I've had time to research this, and I've also thought about how to catch one of these things, but I have not been back to that location. I did send you Victor's Vic. I don't know if you're going to share it with the audience or not, but it's west of Crowley, Louisiana. Both those locations, the train bridge I included in the pictures I sent you, this train bridge goes across this bayou, you know, and it's in the thicket. But when we made it back home, I sighed, I told the sheriff's department, I, I stopped at a gas station. He said, I've seen funny looking dog critters running in front of my camera. But he didn't know what I was talking about. I said, dog man, he just figured it was some stray dog or something. He said, you take care now. <laughs> so It's like, you know, I've seen Martians and no one's going to believe you. But I've come to rationalize about this. This probably made me a better person. At least you're not scared of mouses or bugs anymore. Said, yeah, but what if it's a dog man? Well, what if, you know, I think the good Lord was on my side. I know they had guardian angels. I'm God fearing, believe you me. After something like that, I said, I'll just hang out at Walmart and mail detect. But this is in the boondoggies of Louisiana. So if there's one, there's got to be more, right, Vic? Oh, no doubt. Do you see it as being a good thing or a bad thing that the authorities in your area know about dogmen being there? I mean, after all, they would know about them being there if encounters weren't common. Yeah, I think they do, especially in South Louisiana. But I asked the agent, I said, look, why in the name of a rational being would the South Louisiana, why y'all don't catch these creatures and put them on display for the general public and make us aware? He said, that's not what we do. But uh, there's been other attacks like North Louisiana, the chicken ranch up here. My friend told me this. The dog man crept up there by Natchez and the Mexican workers shot at him and they said it was a bear, but that's not what the facts are. It was a dog, man. Chickens and pigs and all these other stories are just now coming out. And the, the gentleman that I listened to, he was a Vietnam veteran. And he said that his unit shipped dog men from Louisiana, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi to Vietnam to be tunnel rats and to kill the Viet Cong. That took the cake. But it's like you and me. We've never heard of a dog, man, before 2000, whatever it is, you know, you'd never think in your wildest dreams that existed, but it does. And that's what people need to know. It made me a better person. Yes, sir, it did. A lot better. I'm thankful that I wasn't mauled and I wasn't going to take it on, but I've thought about ways of catching that. You can zap them with electricity, you can get cage traps, but there's a lot of people that, are, because you tell your story and I'm sharing with you, they come out finally and say, I did see this and that. It helps get it off their shoulder. It's like I hit a deer on the road type scenario, but this one's got fangs and teeth and in your face. So that's what it amounts to. Yeah, anytime an eyewitness comes forward and gets her encounter out there, it's a good thing. So I like to hear that. How far are you from the Natchez Trace, Mike? That's North Louisiana. I live in South Crowley. If you look on a map, we're only 40 miles from the Gulf. So hurricanes stomp our place of dwelling pretty much they turn it to rubble but natchez is north louisiana and that is about a good hundred and something miles and it's uh the mcclellan chicken facility and i got that story from a friend of mine and he wrote down all the information because he knew i was into the dog man thing this is like 2019 2020 and the wildlife people downplayed it as it was only a bear. But the Mexican workers said otherwise and sold the farmers. But that's what they, cause, and they told me the truth because they don't, one of the wildlife people, I've talked to several of them. He said, well, that's because they don't want you to 
run off from hunting and fishing. They want you to spend money getting out in the woods. They don't want to tell you to look out for a dog, man. So, you know where Natchez is. Y'all can look on Google Maps, McClellan Chicken Facility. Yep. You know, so many incidents, people are not talking. I don't understand why. You know, I guess they think people think you're crazy, but the honest to God truth, yeah, boy, you know they exist. It's just respect, it's like respecting high voltage or mama cat before she claws your face off, you know. But I wondered where they live, how they live, what they eat. They got to have water in Louisiana's jungle. Right now, it's summertime now. I'm sure they're loose. So I bet you, you know what? It's an old adage that you and I know about. If you look for something hard enough, you're going to find it. And you know that's the truth. That's right. They say that another way also. Be careful about shaking too many trees because a leopard just might fall out of one. <laughs> that's what scared me when they said dog men wait in the trees and they fell upon you. So that's, that's got me looking up in trees when I go out to buy you anymore. I mean, that's just common sense. So being 61, I'd be a little bit slower. I thought I was actually thought I was a big and bad hunter out in the woods with a 12 gauge and nothing could stop me until this. And after him, the wildlife person would exclaim you, you're not going to stop that creature animal, Mr. Edwards, with a 12 gauge. Don't try. Don't go back. Don't bring a posse out there to hunt it. Just tell us. I said, okay, good enough. And these, see, in South Louisiana, they're, they got to be serious because they live in the bayou. They have to work around it. You know, the houses are on stilts here. Floods, hurricanes, everything. I mean, it's just the bayou. Mosquitoes, snakes, spiders, ass, bugs. It's just, it's in your face. And this thing was in my face. It was May 17th of 2009 on a Sunday. Yep. At about 6 a.m. I'm sitting here chewing my bubble gum with my dog, and he just stops like that. He was like a pointer German Shepherd. I said, it's got to be something serious, but I don't see nothing. When he came out, both of us, just the fear factor was just like a weapon. And so it's like a, a seventh sense almost. I said, man, this must be how he gets his prey. I was terrified. My adrenaline started going. I said, Lord Jesus. And boy, I to this day, I don't know, Vic, why I didn't shoot that thing in the head with two buckshots, but I guess it was just destiny for him to live and me to live and no encounter, no blood. I know, I know it's God's critters. I did ask the good Lord. I said, Lord, why in heaven's name did you make creatures like that to roam your earth? Because it's in his power to do so, as he says. It's so, okay, good enough. Did that experience draw you closer to God? Yes, sir, it does. Because I know that the good Lord exists and he's just too plain in your face. We, we see all the work of his handiwork, making the universe and all this. There's no way you could get me to ever believe in a foreign God or a, any other theology. <laughs> it, it won't work. I'm not going to worship a, a Barbie doll over God, you know, or whatever it is they put on the pedestal of their heart. It's just it's too real. Sure it did. It brought me way closer to God. I've told people before, and they walked away kind of freaked out. Oh, they said, oh, you know, I warned my husband. You do that. <laughs> so, the folklore, see, because of this dog, man, and you know, it's strange. I know you've asked the same question. Why hasn't there been more research and video play and documentation before 2000? I'm sure there has been, but not a lot. Now it's thousands of stories like you. You come across thousands of people. You do a good service. You help people to get a grip on life. Well, thank you, sir. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, that's a good man, Vic. That's a very admirable. Yep. People are not cracking. Well, thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. When that dog man walked out of the fog, was it focused on you or... Did you see him before it saw you? His eyes were orange and they looked like LEDs and they were jittery. You know, it kind of kind of growling, standing there. He was looking at Hunter and me. I could see him moving his eyes looking. And they were that bright. 
and the fangs and the eyeballs and the ears and the claws. Like he was sticking us out, sizing up which one am I going to get. Hunter tried to get him. I put my hand out. I said, no, Hunter, stay. And he couldn't believe that, but I think he would have shredded Hunter. But that's how brave that dog was. He's willing to save my life. It's all in that much. So, yeah, he just come out of that fog and checking us out. Like we're trespassing on his property. But people need to grow up and just face reality. It's an animal. It exists. We know not where, but that's between him and you, I guess. <laughs> Can I go out hunting these things? I think I would ask Mama first. But I went out hunting the dog. Where are you going, son? I will go hunt the dog, man. We'll be back by dinner. Uh-huh. Yeah, you might not. Yeah, it's like living through almost like an industrial construction accident. You almost got killed by voltage or this or that or almost died in a car wreck. Well, you almost got shredded by a dog, man. That's about as blunt as I care to be. I don't want to gross anybody out, but I don't know if these things can be trained. You know, you get a, I asked him, I said, why don't you get a small puppy dog, man, and train him to be a canine officer? This is my dog, Cletus. <laughs> I could imagine. I think people leave drugs alone with a canine dog that look like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you could train them to do that, to be a canine officer, then, yeah, I don't think you'd have much trouble with people trying to fight you. Did its coat look mangy or was it clean looking? It was hard to tell. He was dark brown then to a lighter brown. Some of his hair was nappy. I remember that much, like knotted balls on the end of some of it. He didn't look too bad. I didn't detect a stench, but he looked like he was pretty furry. I mean, he's got access to water, I'm sure. Around here, you got access to bayou and creeks and coolies everywhere, boy. I mean, you can't not run into a water supply around here, but. Look pretty clean to me. Yeah, their appearance does seem to run the gamut. Some are very clean in appearance, and other ones look nasty, so you never really know what you're going to get. I believe it. Yeah, definitely. You haven't gone hunting since you had that experience. Is that a big source of frustration with you, Mike? Well, I'm going to get up enough nerve to go hunting again. I mean, you know, 2009 was 11 years ago. I said... I'm not going to disobey a deputy of the wildlife and go back there, especially after that. I said, well, I might just walk into a trap and they'll never know I'm gone. So I didn't go back. I've looked at maps. I've taken pictures of the place and skedaddled, but I didn't go down where I was at by the bridge as far as returning to hunt, disobeying the orders of that. No, it's been 11 years. I take up metal detecting. That's probably more rewarding or go hang out at Walmart or, I mean, there's so many things to do in South Louisiana. It beggars description. You can't do it all. So, nope, haven't been back, Victor. No way. No way. Wow. I hope you can get back into the woods soon and actually enjoy yourself when you go. Oh, yeah. There's too many places to get lost in Louisiana. The, the Civil War was fought here. You can find, I look for places to treasure hunt on maps by looking at old plantations and boondoggy areas where there's nobody, which is very peaceful. You and the good Lord and a, maybe some bubble gum and beef jerky and do your thing. You know, when you get older, you like to look at nature, you know, flowers and this and that and just sit peacefully. But it depends on you. And it depends on how good of a woodsman you are if you're going to go too thick. Because you could run into a swamp now. It's got quicksand. And not to mention the critters and snakes and raccoons and the coolies and the bayous. You got to watch where you're going. That's why I always use a map before I go somewhere. I would Google map. I look everywhere for locations for metal detection, too. You know, you can't not find something in South Louisiana with a metal detector. You're always going to get lucky. And it's so beautiful. Y'all need to check out Louisiana one day. When it starts cooling off just a tad bit, when autumn gets here, is a perfect time to go out in that bayou. Because then the, the heat won't burn you up so much. And the skeeters let off of you. Yep. Definitely. I'm going to go back. Not to the same location, mind you. <laughs> but no, Vic. But I'm, I'm going to go. I hope you do. Did you have problems with nightmares after having that experience? Yes, sir, Vic, I did. I, I've jerked away. I think it's like a pack of them was around me. 
but I was always armed in my dream. I had a pistol, a nine millimeter pistol and a shotgun. And I never had Hunter in any of the dreams, but they were around me looking behind trees or I was in a campsite and they come out or, you know, they're about to get me and I wake up with jerk awake. And that's really sad, but it's been a while since I've had nightmares. I think it was about four years ago when they stopped. So that's a good seven years. Yeah, it was quite often. I'm glad it's over with. I mean, I just had to tell myself, you need to tell your subconscious mind in your mind, you know, grow up, face the music, and get back out there, like you're saying. Well, thank goodness the nightmare has stopped. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm a veteran, you know, from the United States Air Force, and I'm pretty keen the way things work, but I had to work myself. Why does this thing, you know, you go right, you instantly jump into why and what for? Why does this creature exist? But then you look, well, he lives on the planet Earth in the same area you do. He's going to have to get around all these humans and all their technology and highways and barbed wire and power lines and schools and manufacturing. He's got to live somewhere and we keep moving into his country. So, yeah, it's strange. Why does he exist? You know, he exists just like any, like a squirrel would, I guess. He's got a right to be there. He was made. But I know in the Bible, which I, the Holy Ghost is going to give me discernment. He said he'd use animals as part of his judgment on wicked humans. So I don't think I'd want to be wicked and against really, really sinning bad and making him mad and go out somewhere and not show up back because you got it. So it works both ways. You know, be what you sow, what you reap. So got to keep your cool and be non-hostile. Stuff like that. If only more people follow that rule. Yes, sir. You know, some, you and I both know there are going to be people that are going to have a dog man experience. I've heard, to keep hearing these ones of me and my grandpappy worn out. It almost got us. Well, almost is better than being... You know, I mean, you don't want to get bit, but you don't want to have an encounter. You want to escape. You'd be thankful you can't for some hair-raising stories. As far as the truth about the matter, go check it yourself. (laughs) That's my best bet. Research it. Look, because there's too many reputable people, doctors, lawyers, veterans. All these people cannot be hallucinating. It's not fairy tale time. It's just reality. You get. I bet you you could get used to a dog, man. If you're around him enough, you'd probably get used to him. I don't know, bro. I've had some big dogs. This thing, I, you'd have to teach it from a young age. And thing is, though, you know animals have instinct. You don't have to tell them to bury their bones or kill or strike or maintain or drink or nothing. They know what's going on. They're programmed already. Yeah, that's a good point. You said you sent a couple rounds over its head of buckshot. Did you miss intentionally or did you miss them due to nerves? Well, you know, in your mind as a shooter, you don't know if somebody's dressing up in a dog costume and it looks in your subconscious mind, you're looking at this thing, this target. And I was so terrified. I raised it. I pointed. I think it was intentionally or unintentionally. It didn't level it off on his right in his face from 20 feet. I would not have missed, but I think it's the luck of the draw. You know, a blam. I mean, this is triple lot buckshot with extra powder. And believe you me, it'll put a hole in any stop sign, pick up your knee if you ain't careful. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I didn't kill him. I didn't shoot him in the face. I've asked me, I've asked myself, why didn't I shoot him and kill him? But I guess that's just faith. I mean, he ran. And I shot after him. I know I probably peppered his hiney a couple of times, but I didn't want to kill any critter for nothing. But this here warranted at least sending him him an idea. You know, I think I saved myself, essentially. Because you know how loud a triple lot buckshot is out of a Remington? It is loud. I mean, you're talking way loud. I work around jet engines in the Air Force. And they're loud. You think ACDC's loud. Try a jet engine. But this here, 12 gauge, was it was the bomb. It was pretty good. I, 
I think I'd use a 10 gauge <laughs> rather than a 12 gauge with slugs. But see, I don't know my stuff. I don't know if that would stop them either. So I, I didn't want to tempt fate and go back and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get him because he's ugly and <laughs> you know, stuff like that. He lives in the bayou. So, yeah, I didn't intentionally shoot him. That's what amazes me. But I know I got I rid of all my stuff and ran. As long as I can run to my truck and escape, thinking the boogeyman's running down the tracks after you, I've had that dream before. That's just hair-raising. But it grew me up. You have to face it. There's sharks in the water off the Gulf. Okay, everybody accepts that. So you just have to accept there's a dog creature. So that's the way it is. You can go out there with a giant milk bone, dog bone biscuits and try to draw this thing. But, you know, it makes you step back and think, okay, I did that in your mind. You say, I, I managed to survive. I'm not going to attempt the law of physics. Because you don't want to pull a dog's tail or his ear because he'll bite you. So I just didn't go back. But I'm I'm going to get out of here and go fishing and go back in the bayou. You know, there's no problem. If I encounter him again, Vic, I probably, with my intent, I mean, I was raised like you are. I would shoot something, believe you me. If I really had to, it would be shot. I was a security guard for years, and I didn't ever want to shoot anybody. But something like this, it's an animal. You know, you can put it in the same class as animal, critter. Critter, buckshot. But that won't work, see? The animal people told you that. He said you go more like a AK-47 or a 50 cal, then you're talking business. But not you, Mr. Edwards. You use a 12-gauge. That's a uh-uh. You don't do that. I said, okay. No problem. So he told me, and I, I've listened. I'm glad you did listen. You had your encounter in May of 2009. What were your thoughts on the existence of cryptids five seconds before you had that experience? Well, sir, you know, I went to the library. Like I am said, I'm an avid researcher, and I've heard all about the loot gurus and stuff, and I thought it was just lore. I said, if, the, if there is such things, it's probably having to do with all the magic that goes here in the voodoo and witchcraft and all that stuff if you've been to new orleans believe me and so I, I was thinking you know i'm out in the bayou and i'm not expecting look here i did not expect to meet something like that in a louisiana bayou i thought when this happened that i had trespassed in some kind of voodoo satanic cursed area and roused spirits i thought it was the devil quite clear exactly the devil I mean, I, it just thing there term, terminated me through fear, you know, but I, I don't like fear. No one does. But, yeah, I would have never. Well, I thought, like, well, I'm good to go. Just the bayou and me and my dog, <laughs> you know, hunting along. La-di-da. <laughs> so I guess I took the bait almost. Yeah, sounds like you did. Well, Mike, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing the details of that experience with us. I really appreciate it. Thanks again so much and have a great night.